Do you ever get frustrated or confused with XREFs or external references within AutoCAD? Missing links, broken files, or not knowing the difference between an overlay and an attached XREF? In today's video, I'm going to be breaking down one of the most misunderstood yet powerful features in AutoCAD, XREFs or external references. If you work on multiple drawings with a team or even on slightly complicated drawings, these are going to save you a ton of time and these are must know tips. With XREFs, a few quick clicks can take you from a blank screen like this to this. And I'm going to show you how in the rest of today's video. Let's jump right in. Starting off, an XREF or an external reference within AutoCAD is simply that. It's a reference that you're seeing in your model space or paper space that is referring to another file on your computer or on your server. These files can be anything from a DWG, which is another drawing file, to a DXF or a PDF even. You can even XREF or externally reference images directly into your drawing. To do this, you're simply going to want to open up your external reference manager here. And you can see once this menu comes up that we have no references. We simply have our drawing one, which is the one that we are in. To add references to your drawing, you can right click and attach any of the different file types, or you can simply use the attach button up here on the insert tab of the ribbon. Typically, you're going to be attaching DWGs, and for today's example, we're going to walk through that. Uh, we're going to attach a drawing file, and in our case, we're going to choose this floor plan drawing that I've got here, and click Open. Now, here is one of the tips that I wanted to highlight and mention today, and that is the reference type you're going to want to typically have overlay selected as your default and overlay attachment or XREF is going to attach this drawing only to the one that we're currently working on, which is drawing one. Now this is to say if later on down the road you have another drawing, say production drawing number one, and you reference our drawing one into it, if all of your XREFs within drawing one are set to overlay, they are not going to show up in production drawing one. If they are set as attachments, they are going to show up in production drawing one. So the XREFs are going to get carried into as many other drawings as you reference them into. Overlays are only going to be referenced into the drawing that you're inserting them into. This should be your default. This will prevent any issues further down the line where you may run into what we call a circular reference where you have two drawings referenced into the same drawing from different sources and this can lead to a circle of updates and issues where drawings are referenced into each other and you can just end up with a bunch of different issues and it's not a great practice to get into and it can also cause issues and errors within your drawing files so for the most part you're going to want to stick to overlay unless you have a good reason to use an attachment XREF. Other than that, you can typically leave these settings blank. This is going to scale uh, your drawing at one to one, so it's not going to change the scale. The insertion point is going to be zero, zero, and then the rotation is also going to be zero. The only other setting here that you may want to change or check is the path type. Now, the path type defines how this file is saved in this current drawing, so a relative path is typically not going to get broken if the entire drawing folder where this XREF and your drawing one resides gets moved around. It's going to still be able to find this reference file if things get moved, and this is gonna prevent broken file links most of the time. If you use a full path, if this folder gets moved around or the name changed in one of the upper folders, it's going to break your path and you're going to need to fix this reference link later on but let's hit OK. So you can see we have our floor plan here. It's been referenced in and it is selectable as a block or external reference within the drawing. You can select it and if you'd like to edit it, this is going to edit it in the original drawing where this was saved. You can simply right click and choose open XREF or edit XREF in place. Open XREF is going to open this drawing in a new tab where we can edit it and when we save and close it, 
you can update it in your other drawing or you can edit it in place and again this is still going to edit in that original spot it's just going to save you the time of opening the file so if it's a quick simple edit i'll typically do an edit in place but if i'm changing a bunch of things or i want to change things a little bit deeper down like in blocks and layer settings i'll typically open that drawing edit it close it and then update it in our drawing Speaking of updating things, I'm going to show you how that works next. So let's open up this drawing. So here we are in our XREF4 plan. And what we're going to do is simply delete a few pieces of text. We've done that. We're going to save our drawing, control S and close it. So we're going to go back to our drawing and you're going to get this pop up in the bottom right here that one of your XREFs was modified. You can simply click this blue link and it's going to refresh your XREF or within your external references, you'll see that some of your files, if you have a bunch of XREFs, will need to be refreshed. You can also do that by right clicking on them and reloading them. We're going to click this link in the bottom right. And one of AutoCAD's newer features in the last few years is the XREF compare feature. Uh, this is on by default, and when you update an XREF, it's going to highlight the objects that have changed within the XREF. So you can kind of bounce between the two. You can turn on and off the, the overlay, uh, showing where the old and the new differ. And you can simply hit X to close that window and just go about your drafting and design. So now you can see our XREF has updated by doing that save and reload here. And those two pieces of text have disappeared. So what are some of the benefits of using XREFs within your drawing? Well, the main benefit is you're going to keep your drawings cleaner and less cluttered. This also means that they're going to be smaller in file size. You're basically offloading some of these objects and line work to other CAD files, especially ones that may get edited or changed up regularly. This is a great workflow and practice to get into drawing files where someone else may be changing and updating them, especially in say a multidisciplinary project, say an architectural project where you've got an electrical designer changing up the electrical and a say an interior designer adding in cabinets and furniture. Those two can work separately, but using the same referenced floor plan, allowing two people to collaborate at the same time without overwriting or getting in each other's way. There are a ton of other benefits, things like keeping things separate just for organization's sake. I tend to do this a lot in site plans, keeping different uh, phases and design portions separately. Uh, you'll have legal line work in one file and reference that in. Then you might have contours in another file and reference that in. This allows you to quickly turn them on and off when you do and don't need them. And as I mentioned, it keeps that final drawing file much smaller. Let's add another XREF. So we're just gonna click that attach button up top. We're gonna go to our file folder here, choose our file type. We're going to add in uh, windows to this plan here as an overlay and keep all of our other settings. And you can see the windows have now been added into this drawing. So say we are now finished our project. We've drawn in here. We've added our labels. We've done anything we need to in this drawing, adding on to these XRAFs. And now we want to save and send out our project file. Now, one issue you will run into with XRAFs is when you send out just this file, say our drawing one, you're not automatically going to be sending the XRAFs that are in here. So what they're going to get is a file that only has the line work that's drawn in our drawing and a few broken links. These files here are going to show up red with an X or a broken link symbol, and you're going to need to send them to the client or come up with another way to fix it. Now, one thing you can do, and I don't recommend doing this until you're ready to package up and send your file, is to make a copy of your file and in it, bind or insert the XREF. So, so to bind or insert an XREF, you can go to the external references menu here. You can also typically select an XREF and right click it to get this same option. But for our case here, we're going to go to our external references panel, right click on an XREF and choose bind. This is going to let you choose between binding and inserting. For our case, we're going to bind. This is just going to permanently attach that file as a block basically within our drawing. So you can see now if I open up the properties 
menu and I select our window uh, XREF. It's no longer an XREF. You can see it doesn't pop up up here. It's not even in our references menu. But when I check properties, it is now called a block reference. You can right click and edit it like a block. All of the objects and settings and styles are still there, but now they've been brought into our drawing. So this is a great thing to do before you send drawings out. If you're worried about losing or breaking any XRefs, simply bind them into your drawing and then save it and you're able to send this file as well as all of the XREF line work within it. So before we get to our last couple tips, if you guys haven't already, don't forget to check out my AutoCAD workflows and fundamentals course. In it, not only do I teach XREFs in a deeper uh, setting, I also go over setting up title blocks, templates, layers, plot styles, annotative text, scales, dimensions, viewports, and a ton, ton more. It's going to take you from beginner to advanced as quickly as I know how with over 20 years of my experience packed into these real world workflows and fundamentals. You're going to get a ton of information out of that course. You can download it by clicking the link up above or down below in the description. Again, it's called the AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows course. Those links are going to give you, my viewers, a discount as well. All right, so jumping back in, I want to share a couple more kind of tips and tricks when working with XRefs as well as a few settings that you'll want to be aware of. First up, if you go into the options menu, so we're just going to type in options here and we're going to go to display. You actually have the ability to fade and change how XRefs are displayed within your drawing. So you can actually fade or darken uh, XRefs within AutoCAD. So you can see here if we fade them out and hit enter, you can see this drawing here got a lot br brighter or uh, less faded. If we go back to options, go back to options and crank this up to say 60 or 70, you can see that it's fading that XREF. I do like to do this so that within your drawing, you know which pieces are referenced in and which ones are actually drawn within this drawing. You can see clearly the difference in zero transparency or fade compared to a 50 or 60% transparency. Next up, we also have the ability to clip uh, references, which can be super helpful if you're referencing in a busy or a large drawing, creating a clipping boundary up at the top here uh, and simply selecting the area you'd like to clip uh, can reduce a ton of clutter within your drawing. So we're just going to hit enter and do a uh, rectangular. Actually, we'll use a polygon, so we'll choose polygonal. And it's going to just ask me to create a boundary that is going to be my clipping boundary. And we're going to hit enter. So you can see it's clipped out everything from this reference outside of my polygon. You can move these on the fly, which is super, super helpful. But what I'll typically do is if I'm dealing with a large area, like I said, in say civil plans, I will crop or clip down my legal to just the area or project area that I'm working on so that I don't have a ton of line work all over in my model space. It also gives me room to create other things like details or profiles off to the sides uh, or above or below. And then lastly here, before I let you go, you can also actually control the layers individually of your XRefs, uh, which is a great way to um, control visibility on the fly. So if you open up the layers manager here, you get a drop down when you have an XREF attached to a drawing. And by selecting it, you're only going to see the layers that are in that XREF. So it's going to filter out all of the layers from your drawing or any other XREFs because you can choose between any of the XREFs within your drawing. And then from here, you can simply select the layers you want to show or hide. So I've selected a ton here and we're just going to turn a bunch of them off. You can see a bunch of things disappeared from the XREF here. And at any time you can turn those on. You're also able to control these from within a viewport visibility uh, option. And if you haven't learned that, you can check out my video on uh, viewports as well to learn how to control what displays based on layer properties in your viewports.
Hopefully these tips have helped. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the video here. And again, if you haven't already, check out my AutoCAD Fundamentals and Workflows course. Thanks for watching and cheers.